Hello and welcome to my channel, Becoming Bev. I'm still in Missouri at our campground, Fred Rock, and I thought I'd show you my favorite little place to park the van here. It's a little nook tucked in between some mimosa trees, right next to the shower house. It has easy access to plug in. It has a picnic table right next to it and a couple of hammocks. When I'm here at the campground, I typically back my van up into this pretty little nook right here. In today's video, I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Questions like, are you ever worried being out there all by yourself? How many months per year are you on the road and do you plan on making it permanent? What are your tips for managing a sticks and bricks business while you're on the road? What are your new travel goals? Where are you going next? What social sites do you learn about where van events are? Are you living out of the van by choice or by unforeseen circumstances? And the most important question, where'd you get that bunny hat? <laughs> I'll be answering all these questions and more. So I also wanted to mention in this video that on my YouTube statistics, it shows that about half the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you do me a big favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, I appreciate it. From Albert Cardenas, how is your van running? What do you do if you break down? Are you keeping up with maintenance? How are the high prices for fuel affecting you and your travels? I feel like I do a very good job keeping up on the maintenance with this van. I always do my oil changes on time. I'm constantly having the fluids checked in the van. I keep good tires. In fact, I just upgraded to 10 ply tires on the van. Um, I've redone the shocks on it because it was pretty bouncy. And if I have an issue, I just have it fixed just like you would if you had a house. If something happens in your house, you just have it fixed. And as far as the prices of fuel go, it just, I haven't been moving around a lot. I've been at the campground helping my daughter and taking care of some family business here with my mom. So I haven't really noticed the high fuel prices affecting me yet. And a similar question from Judy, what do you do if you're on the road and you have vehicle problems or mechanical issues? I carry AAA and I have used them a couple of times. I use them when I got stuck in the mud and I've used them for a flat tire. So that's one way that I handle that. And then you just handle it, you just figure it out. <laughs> when I had the air conditioner problem in Colorado, I just looked on Yelp and looked at the mechanic that had the best reviews. And I was very, very happy with him and I felt very taken care of. From HCARPAM1, the question is, what's on your bucket list? hardest part of van life, favorite destinations, and why. So I have this crazy bucket list with 100 things on it, and I've checked off 56 of them. When I first started doing videos, I was looking for content, so I actually have four videos, four or five videos, in the early days of my YouTube channel where I talk about that bucket list, and on the last one, I've actually included the entire list, and at that time, what was checked off and what wasn't. The hardest part of van life that's an interesting question because I feel like there are some inconveniences, but I don't feel like they're necessarily hard things like emptying the toilet and not being in a hurry when you get ready to go somewhere. Favorite destinations and why? Um, I tend to love the national parks. They're, the beauty is just mind blowing to me. Like being at Yosemite last year, I was so moved with emotion that this is one of the prettiest things I've ever seen. Take a look at this. It's like those are the moments or the feelings that I treasure the most when I see something so unexpectedly beautiful that it moves me. This question from Action Speak Louder Than Words, how did you do your van decor? I did a whole video about van decor. I'll put a link in the video description here. Uh, my van is basically a big crafting project and then I just pick up little things and sometimes it's things that are gifts, you know, like my disco ball up here is a Christmas ornament and so are the little chandeliers. Uh, the cup lights are homemade. My friend Yvonne made those. 
sometimes I pick up trim for the lights and things at Hobby Lobby. So it's just an ongoing mishmash of things from different places. I even pick up things occasionally at a garage sale. Part of her question too is how do you manage it in cold weather? Well, it's pretty cold here today. I have a little heater going and I'm plugged in. My battery runs out pretty quickly running that heater. So maybe I can get a night in. If I know that I'm gonna be in cold weather, I typically try to stay plugged in or keep my stays really short. Sometimes I'll turn on the van so the van heater can just knock the chill out of the air. And then I have all these snugly warm blankets to curl up under. Did I insulate the van? No, I did not insulate the van. I have all these windows in the van. So my only insulation is these curtains. I've actually ordered a roll of thin sillet. So I may make some window coverings just to have one more layer for when it's really cold out. And then you guys know I also put my throw pillows up in the windows because that kind of acts as an extra layer of uh, insulation for me. Do you pre-plan where you're going and is it hard to find hookups? I have loose plans. So I have an idea of where I wanna go, certain things I wanna do, and then I love to plan time to just see where the wind blows me in between those things. When I was in Nebraska, I was driving down the road and saw a sign for a waterfall and just turned to go to Smith Falls and ended up staying there for a couple of days. From Charles Watson, do you ever consider getting a bigger vehicle? Um, I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm always looking. It's interesting on all the Facebook groups that have, uh, are, you know, this size rig for sale. I'm always looking, but I don't ever see anything that I like better than what I have. And I feel like if something happened to my van mechanically, I'm just going to fix it. And I also feel like I'm always going to have a van. Like, I love it so much. I love having everything that I need with me everywhere I go. From HB, have you gone to Arizona to the Energy Vortex? The four best known Sedona Vortexes are found at Airport Mesa, Cathedral Rock, Bell Rock, and Boynton Canyon, each radiating its own particular energy. Uh, yes, I have gone to those energy vortexes and it's fascinating. It's like you can stand there and hold your hands up and you can feel like a, a, a soft, almost like a pulse. And then you turn around and you don't feel it anymore. So there's literally this line where, where you can feel, um, I guess it's the earth's energy or these little vortexes. So yes, thanks for asking. I have been there. Michael Peterson wants to know what year my rig is. So my van is a 2004 Chevy Express 1500. When you're away from your van for long periods of time during the summer, how do you keep your electronic devices from frying? And then how do you keep your van cool in the summer and warm in the winter? I have a lot of ways. That's one of the biggest challenges in van life is getting the temperature right. So I have a max air fan. I have an O polar fan. I have a rooftop air conditioner. I keep them in a little nook under the bed and I keep them basically in the shade so I haven't had any issues. I don't keep them in the direct sunlight. So I haven't had any issues with my electronics. Um, next question from Beth Jones. What are the percentages that you use your camper shower versus using a campground shower or a friend's? I don't use my van shower very often. <laughs> it's an outdoor shower, so it kind of has to be like idea situations for me to use that shower. Uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere with no one around, uh, maybe in the woods on a warm day. Otherwise, I'm just using campground showers or friend showers or my favorite Planet Fitness has been a game changer for me with van life and um, their facilities have been amazing. It's I think $24 a month. So that's been a game changer for the whole showering situation. Randy Stevens says trip planning. Do you always have a destination in mind? So I feel like I answered that question and then he wants to know what apps do you use? And have I ever been to Central Texas? 
Yes, I've spent a lot of time in Texas. I spent most of my adult life there. And then as far as the apps that I use, my favorite ones are iOverlander and Campendium. This question's from Elaine. How much time do you usually spend traveling in your van, at your day spa, and at the glamp ground, or even other places not in your van? Really just curious if you were sleeping in your van pretty much full time. I spend the least amount of time in Texas at my day spa. I would say I'm in Texas two to three weeks out of the year. And then the campground, it depends on what my daughter has going on. Like I've been here quite a bit lately. We've been working on the bus, which I'm so excited to share a few photos of what we've got going on there. We have Jeremy and Derek over there working there, putting the plumbing in permanently instead of using the, the bus holding tanks. And the remodel is coming along really nicely. I'm excited about that. And then plus here, I've had some family responsibilities with my mom that I've been helping with as well. So I'd say right now, it's about 50-50 being on the road and being at the campground. The van feels like a little sanctuary for me. So I love spending time in my van. And even when I'm here, you know, like I've been doing scuba diving lessons. So I did my first practical dive on Friday, Friday night and Saturday morning. And I just drove the van and spent the night in the parking lot at the swimming pool place. So I look for opportunities for, you know, little one or two night getaways, even when I'm here at the campground. MI Sage says, uh, any fun destinations planned? Yeah, so I've been toying with some destinations. I feel like my time here is winding down. I bought tickets to see Lady Gaga in Vegas at mid-April and then there's a van life get together in the Baja Peninsula the next weekend so I'm thinking at some point I'll start meandering toward Vegas and then maybe head down the Baja Peninsula for a while and then I also have a couple of trips planned not in the van I have a dive vacation planned with a group of friends in Puerto Rico and then my sister goddess friends and I are meeting in St. Lucia so I may start Spend a little bit of extra time there exploring as well. Dolphin921 asked, Hi Bev, are you living out of your van by choice or due to unforeseen circumstances? I am 100% living out of my van by choice. Of all the places that I have to choose from to stay and to live, my van is my favorite place. It's the place I feel most comfortable. It's the place that when I wake up, I'm smiling. I feel like those days I wake up in the van that I'm on an adventure and that makes my heart sing. Van Life Hacker wants to know, are you seeing anyone? Can we go on a date? I did a video on dating. I do not have a significant other. I have friends um, that I see from time to time, but no one that I have a full on commitment with. I also uh, am open to talking to new people. so. You never know. A uh, grateful Ted wants to know why are there interstate highways in Hawaii? <laughs> you got me on that one, Ted. I have no idea. <laughs> Mark Moffat, what are your three favorite movies? For years, my favorite movie was E.T. And then that one got replaced by Titanic. And then Avatar. When Avatar came along, it was the first movie that I had seen in 3D and I was just blown away by it. So I'd say those are my three all-time favorites. Henry Thomas, do you like Waffle House, In-N-Out, Burger, and Whataburger? Absolutely, I do all three. <laughs> It's funny, sometimes when I'm traveling, it's like uh, most a lot of people don't like Waffle House and I love Waffle House. So I'll pop in there when I'm all by myself um, because then I don't have to negotiate with other people about where to eat. I can just eat wherever I want. <laughs> Uh, Mike's RV camping. Are you planning on passing through Kentucky? Mike, I'm sure that I will at some point, but I don't have any current plans to do that. Patty Amaya wants to know, what social sites are you on to learn about van get-togethers or events with other campers? As far as the vanner type get-togethers, like the old 70s type vans, I go to floridavancouncil.com. Judith does a great job keeping that site updated with those types of van get-togethers. And then as far as the other ones go, sometimes they just show up in my Facebook feed. I just Google van life get-togethers and there's about three or four different websites that come up that have some listed. What are your tips for managing a sticks and bricks business while doing van life? The most important thing is to 
get good help. I feel so, so blessed to have my manager, Renee, running my day spa and to have my daughter running this campground. They are both just blessings in my life. And because of the two of them, I can travel and have the life that I have. So yeah, hire good help. The unconventional wife wants to know, are you ever worried being by yourself in some of the parks? I'm not. I have never had a single moment of being afraid in this van. I come in here, I lock the doors, I put down all the curtains and it's like a little cave in here. I've never once been afraid. You know, fear is an interesting thing. I feel like sometimes you have to be afraid and do it anyway. I'm having a little bit of anxiety around this scuba class. I took the first pool session and clearing the water out of the mask. So what you do is you flood your mask with water and then you're supposed to press the top of it and blow out your nose and push the water out of the mask. It freaks me out three out of the four times that I had to do it and I'm having a bit of anxiety about it. So I've been thinking because I have to do it again uh, this Thursday and Friday in my open water dive. So yeah, I have some fear around it and I feel like you have fear around it and you do it anyway. But then I also think that you need to trust those, your, your gut feel, your gut instincts. If something doesn't feel right, if a place doesn't feel right, move on. If a person doesn't feel right, get away from them. I feel like it's different having fear and doing it and then having like this gut instinct that something is actually wrong. Julio Navarez wants to know, will you be doing any van life travels through Mexico or Canada? I would absolutely love to do both of those. I'm thinking possibly Mexico in April, then we'll see what's going on here at the campground, whether Misty needs me or not. And then I would love to just finish uh, driving the, the California Highway number one and head on up to Canada from there. Home on the Range asks, will you expand your hospitality business to include a van life park? Yes, we'll absolutely have some van life parking spots here at the Glamp Ground. In fact, the one that I'm in, especially when I'm not here, uh, would be a perfect van life parking spot. And if you guys haven't checked out our website, uh, go to fredrock.us and check out what Misty's done with our website. She's done a really good job with it. How is dating on the road? You know, I haven't dated a lot on the road. I mean, here and there, I find if I'm going to be at a place for more than a week or two at a time, you know, maybe I'll get on Bumble or Hinge and scroll through. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a bit of time to get to know someone through the online dating sites. And by the time I get to know them, I've already moved to the next destination. So it's a little tricky, but I haven't given up. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for being here with me on the journey. I appreciate y'all so much. And remember to hit that subscribe button this time. <laughs> Thanks for being here. You keep watching and I'll keep posting content.